Hello everyone. Welcome back to Dental Digest with the Study Boards. Today we are going to discuss actinomycosis and this topic has been extensively tested recently in the examinations. Now this is again a part of the bacterial infection series in oral pathology. So let's start with its cause and how it spreads. Now actinomycosis is mainly caused by bacterium Actinomyces israeli which is a filamentous bacteria and it is important to note that it is not a fungus. This is a common mistake that students make despite its name. And then there are some other species as well that can cause this infection but it is not important for you to remember for this examination. Now to remember these you may refer to the mnemonic that I have provided below but it will not be tested so don't worry about it. Okay. Now let's talk about the transmission. That is actinomycosis, it is a very opportunistic infection which means that it typically occurs whenever there is any disruption like if there is any trauma or there is any surgery, right? So this allows the bacteria to invade the deeper tissues, okay? And it is very important for you to note that this infection is not communicable between people. So actinomyces bacteria is normally present in your oral cavity and it is a part of your natural flora. Next thing that you have to remember is what are the different types of actinomycosis. So let's talk about what different types of actinomycosis are based upon where the infection occurs in the body. The first one is cervicofacial actinomycosis. Now this is the most common type that affects the head, neck regions and specifically the jaw region. The second one is thoracic actinomycosis and this type of actinomycosis it involves your lungs, pleura and pericardium. The third one is abdominal actinomycosis where it affects the cecum that is surrounding tissues and even the abdominal walls. Then the next one is pelvic actinomycosis and this one is mostly related to the use of intrauterine devices that is IUD. And for you guys to remember all these different types you can think of the mnemonic called CTAP which stands for cervicofacial, thoracic, abdominal and pelvic and it will be a very convenient way for you guys to remember all these different types in your examination. Next point that we have to remember is what are the clinical features and oral manifestations of actinomycosis. So let's dive into it now. First thing is there are some indurated lesions that is these are hard swollen areas which are commonly found in the cheeks and even in the submandibular region. Next point is there is purulent exudate that is pus that is containing sulfur granules very important this will be the question that you will be tested upon sulfur granules which are yellow or white particles present in the purulent exudate. Next point is sinus tracts that is there are draining sinuses which often reach the skin surface. Now we have to talk about what are the different oral manifestations. So the first point is that there are some indurated swellings in the connective tissues. Second point is there is presence of sulfur granules. I have just told you that sulfur granules is an important topic for you guys to recall and this will be tested in your examination. Third point is there is some involvement in gingivitis, periodontitis, sublingual plaque and even in the root surface caries. And to remember all of this you can think of a mnemonic called SIPS, S-I-P-S which stands for sulfur granules, indurated lesions, purulent exudate and sinus tracts. Next we have to talk about how do we exactly diagnose actinomycosis. So our first step is specimen collection that is we collect pus, tissue or sputum samples of the patient for examination. Once we have the specimen collection done then we do gross examination that is we mix the pus with saline in a test tube and the sulfur granules which we have talked about earlier will sediment in the bottom appearing to be white or yellow particles. And then once the gross examination has been done, we can further move into the microscopic examination where we do gram staining and this reveals thin gram positive filaments which are surrounded by club shaped structures creating a sun ray appearance. Now this word sun ray appearance is important and they can ask you about this in the examination. And to remember all this diagnosis process you can think of a mnemonic GSSS that is GSSS which stands for gross examination, specimen collection, sulfur granules and sun ray appearance. Again the last two ones are important that is sulfur granules and sun ray appearance. So when we are talking about 
for the treatment of actinomycosis, the primary treatment is long-term high dose of penicillin. And for those patients who are really allergic to penicillin, alternatives like tetracycline or erythromycin can be used. Now there are some cases where surgical intervention could also be used like drainage and excision could be a part of the treatment wherever it is necessary. And now to remember the treatment options, think of the mnemonic PET, it stands for penicillin, erythromycin and tetracycline. Now let's talk about the key points. And the first key point to remember is that it is a chronic granulomatous disease which is caused by Actinomyces israeli which is a filamentous bacteria, not a fungal infection, right? It is important. Second point to remember is that it is an opportunistic infection and it is not communicable. Then we talked about four different types of actinomycosis. We talked about cervicofacial, thoracic, abdominal and pelvic. Then we talked about some clinical features where we talked about indurated lesions, sulfur granules and sinus tracts. Diagnosis, we talked about how specimen collection has to be there, then identification of sulfur granules and sun ray appearance under microscope. In the end we talked about the treatment where we talked about long-term high dosage of penicillin or surgical intervention could also be given and if the patient is allergic to penicillin you have always the alternatives of tetracycline and erythromycin. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Dental Digest with the Study Boards. We really hope that this information on actinomycosis was very valuable and insightful for you guys. And remember to subscribe to our channel for more insights into these important topics that could be tested in your examination. Like this video and comment below with any questions or topics that you would like us to cover in the future episodes. Thank you so much.